Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to start a, 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 a message today. It's not a series. It's just a single message. And it's called The Valley of Dry Bones. How many of you are familiar with the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37? Every, a lot of people in here are very familiar with them scriptures. We're going to read chapter 37. We're going to open up our message today with Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Whoops. Hallelujah. When you have that, say amen. Hallelujah. Stand in honor to the not to me, but to the word of Yahweh. The hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Yahweh Elohim, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, saith Yahweh. Yahweh, we want to thank you for this message today, Yahweh. I ask Yahweh, you anoint my voice, Yahweh, anoint my words, Yahweh, that I'd speak only what you'd want me to speak today, Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh, anoint our ears to hear today what you want to say to your people, Yahweh, in your precious name. Amen. Give Yahweh a hand clap of praise. You should sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. So where are we going to start here? Well, let's start with the definition which was before the scripture, and it should not have been. Okay? One script, one word, I was curious as to what it meant, what it was and what it meant. 
sign news. It's in that, and then twice in verse 16 and verse 18. It means it's a Hebrew word, gehid, by an analogy, attendant. There is another definition for you, which I'll give to you if you ask after service. I'm not going to say now. It does. There is another meaning for that. But that's what the word sign news means, in case you're curious. Okay, now. So where do we start here? Well, let's first start by setting the scene. Yahweh took Ezekiel and put him in the midst of a valley of bones. Not only a, a valley of bones, but a very dry bones. A place of death and destruction. The scene of heavy, heavy defeat. Full of confusion and disorder. In fact, they were not just dry bones. But as Ezekiel gives a guided tour, he noticed that they're very dry. Have you ever seen a dry bone? It's pretty brittle. Now, it's here also that Yahweh asks Ezekiel a very important question. He says, Son of man, can these bones live? What he's saying is, is it possible to find life in the place of death? Could this valley of dry bones be a scene of victory? Now, before we go any further here, it might be good to set a little stage of where, the, where we're coming up to in verse 37. I mean, uh, chapter 37. Let's go back a little bit. First, the first 24 chapters of Ezekiel, Yahweh declared his judgment on the people. Judah had forsaken Yahweh and followed and turned to idols. There was no hope, no reprieval, no it was gloom and doom and gloom. After chapter 24, the surrounding nations Ezekiel speaks to the surrounding nations and declares Yahweh's judgment on them too. But then in chapter 33, there's a bit, a bit of brightness here, a glimmer of hope, like the promise of a dawn. Jerusalem has fallen, but there yet could be some hope for the people of Yahweh. Can these bones live? Even though pe the people of Judah were in exile, far away from land, land, they had promised them, scattered among the nations under judgment, Yahweh asks, Can these bones live? This is a question we ask even today. I mean, look around us. We see the weakness of the church in the face of confident, secular state. I mean, look at the nation. We have a nation that's going forward with same-sex marriage. That's trying to go forward with abortions. 
We live in the days of dry bones. Can these bones live? It's pretty easy to feel down about the state of the world around us. We seem to look around and on our streets and might, we see people who seem to have nothing better to do. We have churches that are losing members. And how one really seems, no one seems to care anymore. As a, as a believing society, we're in the middle of a dark, long winter. There's no color anywhere. It's just shades of gray. Some of us might feel this way ourselves. We may f might feel like we've lost our color, our passion, our excitement. We're living in the dark. We see ministers today who deny the cross and the resurrection. We see churches trying to take the songs, the blood songs, out of our, our, out of our hymnals. Pastors who spend their time at the pulpit talking about a poem or something they've read in the magazine. The mood. The mood seems to be that we're in decline. Things aren't the way they used to be. Instead of living in excitement, we seem to be living in the dark. Can these bones live? But now I look at the, the promise of, of Yahweh. He shared through Ezekiel. He says, I, Yahweh Elohim, am going to bring them back. I will bring you back out of your graves and deliver you. What a promise! What a promise! So in this dark world that we live in, this world which rejects the word of Yahweh, it might seem huge, it may seem dry, a big dry valley of bones, a place of little hope, a place with no true joy, no true focus for living the example of Yahweh Messiah has given us a place where we've been to plead, a place where we've, we've been told to place our own needs above others. But we have that promise of Ezekiel. And you notice Ezekiel, when he gave the answer, did you notice his answer? He gave the only right answer. He said twice, O Yahweh Elohim, you know. Humanly speaking, the bones were beyond hope. If we're depending on ourselves and our own strength and resources, we're, then we, above all men, are to be pitied. O Yahweh Elohim, you know.
It's when Ezekiel submits to Yahweh, the Yahweh demonstrates that he is the one who can give life to the dead. Sister Stephanie, can you read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 19, please? Accounting that Elohim was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Okay, so you see here, Yahweh was able to raise him up, even from the dead. Ezekiel gave the answer. He said, Yahweh Elohim, thou knowest. As he gives instructions to Ezekiel, he commands Ezekiel to prophesy over the bones so that they might live. Now, as we see in verse 7, Ezekiel does it, and the, and the bones do it. The bones rattle together, and the sign news than their flesh. The bodies lie on the ground whole. But there is still something missing. Do you remember back in the book of Genesis when Yahweh created Adam from the dust and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. That's exactly what these reformed bones are missing. There's no breath in them. So Ezekiel prophesied again to bring breath on them, to bring them to life. Look at verse 10. It says, And they lived and stood on their feet, an exceeding great army. In the New Testament, what did Yahweh Messiah do when he entered the room? When he entered the room of the disciples after he rose from the dead? This room where they were at, they were hiding. They were hiding in fear. The doors were locked tight. The windows were closed. Because they were afraid of what was going to happen. But notice what Yahweh Messiah did. did. Yahweh Messiah breathed on them and said, Receive ye, receive ye the Holy Spirit. He gave them life. The book of John begins with calling Yahweh Messiah the word of Yahweh. In the end of the gospel, the word breathes life into the disciples and their lives are filled with hope and joy. So now what's this all about? In verse 11, Yahweh, Yahweh gives an explanation. Here we have the key to the understanding of the whole thing. The, these bones, he says, are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. 
you see, the people of Israel, both Israel and Judah, had lost all hope. They were picturing themselves as those dry bones. They had given up. But Yahweh gave them a message that he will raise his people up. That he's, the, he's Yahweh who will raise the dead. No one else can do this. No other God can do anything like it. And he does it so that they will know that I am Yahweh. That he is Yahweh. Verses 6, 13, and 14, that's in. What's Yahweh saying? Yahweh is saying here that they'll keep the hope, they'll keep the covenant. They'll know who he is, the covenant keeping Elohim, when he keeps his covenant with his people. And he raises them from death and gives them his spirit. You see, the rising of the dead is something only Yahweh can do. So, it's something that we must pray to him that he will do. When we look at our country around us, though, or indeed the world, we see men, women, boys and girls who are dead spiritually. As Paul writes in Ephesians, Sister, let's uh, go to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, please. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So what's the... What does Paul say here to the Ephesians? And you were dead in the trespasses of your sin, in which you once walked by nature, children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. You were children of wrath. No one can make themselves alive to spiritual things. It would be like the dry bones, expecting the dry bones. In the valley, to perform CPR on themselves. That's not going to happen. Now I might want to ask you a question here. And only you would know. How would you say, how would you rate your own spirituality? Would you call it passionate? Or would you call it like dry bones? 
You see, we need the power of Yahweh, the covenant Elohim, to give us life and to give us breath. His spirit in us is what we need. Just like Yahweh Messiah died and was raised to new life, so we need to be born anew, raised to new life in Yahweh Messiah. You see, the sentence of death that we had upon us, he fulfilled that. That was paid by him. We need Yahweh to bring back these old bones. We need Yahweh to breathe. We need the breath of Yahweh to come in from all directions and sweep across this land, bring life, joy, and hope to all. But notice what happens in the valley. It began with Ezekiel preaching the word to the bones. It began with one person, one of the very few who had faithful were faithful to Yahweh to share his word. And even the old dry bones responded. New life emerged. Joy and hope, hope emerged. A love of Yahweh emerged. Just from one faithful man who stepped into the impossible scenario and to share prophetic life. The life-giving word of Yahweh. The spirit of Yahweh blew through the valley, bringing life to those dead bodies. We need to remember that Yahweh kept his promise he made. to bring new life by giving the Spirit. The Spirit was given to the church. 3,000 were added on that day. As we earnestly desire people to be brought from darkness to light, so we recognize that it must be the work of Yahweh. We cannot bring life to people. Please pray with me that Yahweh will move mightily in this world, our land, and many will be raised to life as they trust in Yahweh Messiah and receive the spirit of Yahweh a great miracle that only Yahweh can do. I go back to the original question. Can these bones live? And the answer, O Yahweh Elohim, you know. In a world filled with fear and hopelessness, let's not be dismayed. But instead, let us breathe in the word of Yahweh. Let life, let him who gives life, give us life. Let him who breathed life into the dry old bones, let him breathe life into our tired bodies. Let him give his word to us 
that we might be raised from the valley floor and come to know our God passionately. From there, let's act as disciples. Let's respond to the gift of life. Let's be like Ezekiel, not to be afraid to take his word into the world because his word is life. Even the most desolate part of the planet, Yahweh's word can bring life. Surely, the world in which we live has not yet become as bad as Ezekiel encountered, encountered in the valley. Surely, we don't need to be locked into a room, a secret room, like the disciples did in fear of their lives. One day that might come now. Yahweh's word is for all nations, all people, for all of us. Where do you see these bones? Where do you see dry bones? Are they in our country? Are they in our community? Are they in our workplace? What about our homes? Maybe they live in us. Wherever these dry bones are, Yahweh's word is waiting to be shared so that only he can bring new life. Yahweh Messiah, Yahweh's word, who walked on the earth, is waiting to show himself to the dry bones. They might see him and believe. Yah Messiah offers new life to dry bones. New life, which will bring us out of the valley into the presence of Yahweh. So I go back, I ask the question that I had asked earlier. How would you rate your spirituality? Would you call it passionate? Or is it dry bones? If you feel like today you're in a valley of dry bones, come on up. Come on up and pray. The altars are open. Yahweh's here in that valley of dry bones. We might be in a situation where we feel like we're in a valley of dry bones. We might be in a place in our, ourselves where we feel like we're going nowhere. We're in a valley of dry bones. We feel spiritually like we're those dry bones. Come on up. The, the altars are open. For those who would like to pray.